What's up guys, it's Crayfish Obsession here, and today I'm going to start a new series again, but this one I'm actually going to continue it, um, and this is going to be Crayfish Profiles, so I'm just going to go over a species of crayfish uh, that I may or may not have. Uh, today is the first episode, and we'll be going over Chax Pulcher. Now this is a new male, and if you guys are wondering where the female is, the female's in here, she's about to molt, so she's in this little container, so the fish don't pick at her or stress her or anything. This is a nice little molting container. Um, I can, and I can tell because when they're about to molt, this back carapace kind of, like, starts to get all, like, really white and then starts to kind of come off. So, I got her out of the tank when I saw that. But today, we'll be going over Cherax Pulcher. Um, and these guys are really cool crayfish, and if you don't really know a lot about crayfish, but you do know some about fish keeping, you've probably heard of this crayfish. Uh, they go by Rose Moon Crayfish, or Pink Coral Crayfish. They're really cool, they're from Irian Jawa, uh, in Indonesia, and this is near Sorong, on the Bird's Head Peninsula. Uh, these guys are sometimes called Hoa Creek Crayfish, because these guys do come from Hoa Creek. Um, and these guys are pretty similar to Cherax and Bozwani, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, and just, these are one of the most stunning crayfish out there. Look at that pink, and then look at the blue. And there is some shell rot on this guy, but I've asked some people, and they all said it's just going to heal up on its own. But this guy is a beautiful specimen right here. Wow. Now, I'm going to take him out and show him some kind of key points to identifying this guy and some uh, some cool stuff. Now, before I get into the handling, uh, let me just go over a basic care guide. Now, for a specialized care guide for the species, I'm not really sure, but um, I'll just go over some basic points. They like rocky habitats. They're Hoa Creek, where they're from, is super rocky, lots of rocks, and a pretty fast-flowing stream, um, and it's not as big, so you want lots of rocks, uh, gravel, that kind of stuff, because that's where they are naturally born into, and also because they're more fast-flowing, if you have a fast-flowing filter, that's fine with them. Uh, because they are from this kind of fast flowing creek. Now all the other stuff is basic uh, crayfish care that you can find anywhere. But uh, another important thing to note is these guys are not immune to crayfish plague. So if you're if you're also keeping anything procambrous or nor or North American, anything wild caught from North America, um, you don't want to cross contaminate the water, or else you could give your chair expulture. Uh, crayfish plague which would not be a good thing now um and i think these guys take a while to really acclimate to the aquarium uh the female i have is now she's always going after me for food but this male is pretty docile at the moment but i'm fairly sure he'll get uh more aggressive as times go by all right so this is my chair expulsion uh this is the male and uh how you can tell is um all right so this is the Cherex Bulger and the camera my phone cannot even pick up all the pink it has this camera does not even do it justice uh, it looks really pink in footage it's even pinker in real life really good looking crayfish oh uh, but yeah so this is my Cherex Bulger male and this is the first time I've ever picked him up before but I'll show you guys uh, key identification points so now, as you can see, he walks away right as I start to want to pick him up. Okay, so as you can see, he does have a bit of shell rot here. So on this claw particularly, as you can see, there's some shell rot one point here and one point actually near the base of the claw. He actually cannot pinch using this claw. As you can see, if I try to piss him off, this claw will actually pinch, but this claw, will, he will just flare around as defense. Another important point you want to notice is that uh, if claws are regenerated or not. So when crayfish regenerate claws, uh, contrary to what a lot of people say, the claws are never fully regenerated. 
Um, and as you can see, this one is fairly obvious. Uh, as you can see, if I pin them down here, as this claw right here is the original claw. As you can see, this claw, and when I'm doing this, notice how I'm not actually grabbing onto their claws. If you grab onto one of their claws, they will amputate their claw. So I'm just touching their claw. So this claw is obviously the older claw. And as you can see here, there is a knob in the moving finger. I forgot what that's called, but the movable finger part, there is, you see that very prominent knob, and you see how this claw just looks a lot more uh, bigger and stronger. Whereas on this claw, the knob is not there. It just, it looks more slender. And this is obviously a regenerated claw. Uh, I think it's grown back pretty well. And by next molt, this claw should be fixed. But um, yeah, so this claw is in full functional condition, but this is the regenerated claw. Well, this claw is the old claw because of the knob in the middle. And I usually like to tell by the knob in the middle because a lot of the times with crayfish, they never fully regrow that knob, as you can see there, this knob right here. And that's basically how you can tell what claws are regenerated and not regenerated. Another important part of Shurax Pulcher is as you can see, the eyes are very large compared to the uh, compared to the body itself and in proportion. The Cherax Pulcher eyes are extremely large, uh, pretty large eyes for a crayfish. Um, I'm not really sure where this will come in handy. Obviously having better vision is good, but uh, these eyes are really big. Another really important part is, is uh, these claws here. Now, let me try to zoom in onto the camera. So as you can see, Oh, uh, just me trying to zoom in onto the pulcher. Uh, if you can notice the spine right under the eye, uh, this is pretty prominent in Cherax pulcher. So if you see that kind of spine coming out of the eye, kind of at the base of the eye, if you notice that spine under there, and I'll try to take it out so you guys can so see. So this is the Cherax pulcher out of water. Uh, as you can see, I'm holding it in a position where its claws are unable to get me. But as you can notice here, I'm going to put the Cherax Pulcher closer to the camera. This little spine under here, and also on this side too. Pretty important parts of identifying Cherax Pulcher. Uh, it's also, like I said, it's large eye. You also want to count on the rostral spines it has, because there is um, another uh, crayfish that looks a lot like Cherax Pulcher that's in the trade. A lot of times it's identified as Cherax War Samsonicus. Uh, so you want to count these rostral spines to make sure you got the right one. And uh, so this is how I kind of handle it. And let me show you how to tell if it's a male. Also, you want to note these spines underneath here. These are also Cherax Pulcher kind of ish thing. Also, its claws are going to have some white underneath and blue over the claw. So that's kind of Cherax Pulcherist thing. Obviously, pink over the carapace, but there are no pink versions available. I think those are called blue moons in the trade. Now as for the uh, as for the male or female, as you can see here at the base of the of the um, of these two legs, as you can see the front two legs, you see that's where the uh, this is where this is where the male deposits its sperm into the female. So the sperm is gonna come out of here. If it was a female, it would be on the third base of legs, and there would be an obvious node kind of where the eggs would come out. Now he's trying to give me a good pinch right here, and I can tell he's being kind of uncomfortable. So let's kind of put him down back where he belongs, in the water. So if you're wondering uh, what the biotope, I guess, or where these guys are found, these guys are found in uh, Hoa Creek. Um, and this is near Sorong um, in Indonesia, and this is in West Papua. These guys are found near the Bird's Head Peninsula-isk type of things, and a lot of times they're compared with Cherax Bozimani. But uh, as you can see, as I'll try to get them again. But um. Cherax Bozamani actually has a more slender areola, whereas I'm not sure if you can really see the areola from the camera here. Uh, it's pretty blurred out. Let me try to 
zoom this camera in. But uh, the areola of the pulcher is actually wider. And this does require some time to, uh, some really time close looking. But the areola is wider and the Cherex pulcher as a whole has a more slender body in general. And this is because Bosmani are um, probably bigger they do get a bit bigger because Bosmani are lake dwelling open water. Um, while pulchers are usually found in smaller, faster flowing creeks. And this is why their body is a lot more slender, as you can see here. And the pH of the water they're found is 6.6, .6, so that's pretty neutral. Uh, pH hasn't really come up anywhere. And if anyone's asking about the shell rot, uh, I did give one salt bath, but most of the time you should just wait for it to molt off. Now, also his antenna, one of his main antennas are missing, so that should molt back pretty soon. But otherwise, he looks pretty, he's in really good condition. He's also fairly big, haven't measured him yet. He looks like he's around five inches, so that's really good. Another really cool thing to note about Cherax, just in general, is, uh, let me see if I can move the light in front of this. But as you can notice, their claws have a little mottled uh, pattern on the front. Let's see if I can get it closer and not get pinched. But I think in this claw, let's see if the reflection is not going to happen. Yeah, so as you can see, there is a little mottled pattern, and scientists don't really know why it has it. Also, you can see the glaring shell rot. Doesn't look too bad. Looks like it should mold off pretty soon. But, um, as you can see, this kind of modeled pattern is in every chair axe. It's also on their sides. So, I go. Uh, now it's not as prominent on this one, but there is a modeled pattern around here. So you can see these spy side spikes kind of got me. But, um, this modeled pattern every chair axe crayfish has. Some people think it's for crayfish to identify one another but we don't really know why it has this modeled um, this modeled pattern on the claws. So yeah, that's Cherax Pulcher. Uh, that's kind of a, my basic care guide, field guide, and a little biology on the Cherax Pulcher itself. Uh, and yeah, this is Crayfish Obsession, and I'll see you in the next one.